Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. In this episode, I will talk about snow. Railroad operators would like their track to look like this. But sometimes, the weather makes the rails look like this. Even today, the basic tools that the railroad has to fight snow are a shovel and a broom. Other than the basic shovel and broom, there are various types of snow removal equipment. Let's look at some of them. The first trains often ran on a nice spring day. While summer and autumn are also nice, it was not too long before the seasons passed and with winter came the first snow on the rails. It was soon found after the opening of the railroads that snow could make running trains somewhat problematic. With light snow, often just running the trains was all that was needed to keep the line clear. Even today, this is the most basic way lines are kept open. With more and more snow, though, some better method needed to be found to get the snow off the line. Some rail lines never did have any great deal of thought or worry about the snow or removal of it. But the railways that run through the high mountains, well, they really have to deal with snow. So let's take a look at some of the types of snow fighting equipment. One of the first power methods of snow removal was some form of plow. It was not long after rail lines had more and more snow to worry about that special plows were fitted to the front of some locomotives. Another method was to have a plow car. Special plows were developed like this that could be coupled to any locomotive. While some of these plow cars had a plow at one end, Others had plows on both, so a train could run around the plow and then be able to plow the other way. There were even more elaborate machines developed for snow fighting. Let's look at some of them. Some of the plow cars had small wings added to make for a wider bit of clearing, like this. Later machines were made to make this their main aim. This is called a flanger. Its job is to simply push the snow aside while clearing out the area along the rails where the wheel flanges roll. Without clearing the flange area, snow quickly turns to ice and can easily derail a train. For the most part, railways like flangers and spreaders. One of the most well-known names in snow fighting is Oswald F. Jordan, the creator of the Jordan Spreader. In the 1890s, while working as a roadmaster for the Canada Southern Railway in Niagara, Ontario, Jordan, working with Robert Potts, invented a single blade mechanism with an adjustable height blade worked by a hand crank and gearing. In 1898, Jordan formed his own company, the O.F. Jordan Company. In 1906, the company moved to the United States. While the primary purpose of the spreader was spreading ballast along the tracks, it is in snow fighting that the name is often remembered. Though Jordan died in 1910 and the company was run by Walter Riley thereafter, the name Jordan is still with us to this day as synonymous with snow fighting. On our travels, we spotted this spreader on a siding near Essex, Montana. Even this major piece of modern machinery carries its own shovels and brooms. We now come to the most complex, expensive, and impressive way to clear snow from the rail line, the rotary. Even this rotary on display at the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento not only looks ominous, but also more than a bit terrifying. Here are a pair of Union Pacific X Southern Pacific rotaries coming off the Sierra Nevada heading for Roseville Yard near Sacramento. 
Rotaries are often operated in pairs like this so they can operate in both directions. If it's snowing hard enough to bring out the rotaries, often once you've cleared the line, you need to start clearing it in the opposite direction. Unfortunately, we were unable to get footage of the rotaries in action in the mountains. But maybe that's just as well. When the rotaries are running, it's best to stay far away as they throw a tremendous amount of snow and can be very dangerous to get close to them. Possibly the best way to watch the rotary snowplows at work is from a helicopter. As I have already said, there are some places where the broom is often the main snow removal tool but then sometimes a power broom is needed. For streetcar tracks, sometimes one might use a streetcar sweeper. This kind of vehicle dates back to the end of the 19th century. Lisa, our lead researcher, has had some personal contact with a car like this. When she was a volunteer at the Oregon Electric Railway Museum in Brooks, Oregon, she helped on some of the restoration of a sweeper car originally used on the lines in Portland, Oregon. The museum's car looks very much like the one pictured here. To the best of our knowledge, there are but two of these vintage cars left in the USA. The one at the Oregon Electric and the other at the Seashore Trolley Museum in Kennebunkport, Maine. If anyone knows of more of these types of cars, leave a comment below. One other way to remove snow is to have the track do it for itself. This is a switch heater. Devices like this are often found in heavy snow areas, like for example in the Sierra Nevada mountains between California and Nevada. Some work by blowing hot air over the switch, keeping the switches free of snow and ice, both of which can block the movement of the points. In a recent storm out in the more desert section of track in Nevada, where we live, east of Reno, there was so much snow that the power-operated switch points would not work. This required the trains to stop and they had to clear each one out by hand. So the basic hand shovel and broom still has its place in snow fighting. And as always, we'll see you on the train. Whether there is snow on the line or not, <laughs>